So this brings us to wall painting. Mural paintings will liberally adorn the walls at Gnosos and other palaces, and these are generally done in what's called bon fresco. B O U sorry, B U O N fresco. In other words, they're painting on the plaster while it's wet. They have three to four hours to paint, but the advantage is the paint is permanent. It is part of the plaster due to a lot of chemistry that I won't get into. So these are extremely permanent. They won't peel like the ancient Egyptian frescoes where they painted on a dry plaster wall. And the walls and columns will be brightly painted as well. Uh, murals are thought to reflect sort of Minoan life, uh, especially upper class life, upper class life in the palace. And the piece we're starting with is La Prégienne, which is actually a bit of a misnomer. We'll get into that in a minute. She's probably a woman or goddess, and this is found in the Queen's Megaron. In other words, it's in the Queen's reception hall in the Palace of Gnosos. It may be the Queen or one of her courtiers, uh, courtesans, and we don't have a lot of what surrounds it, so it's sort of a piece without context. It was probably part of a larger ceremonial scene, but we don't know what it was. Previous conventions uh, indicate a few things to us. First of all, we see the very large eye. That's going to be a Minoan convention and one that the Mycenaeans and other societies will pick up on. We're not sure necessarily of the significance. We also see the head in profile, very similar to what we've seen in Egypt and amongst the Sumerians. Yet it's somehow unique in that she looks glamorous. In fact, this is why she's called La Prigienne. This is found in the 19th century. And at the time, the women of Paris are seen as particularly beautiful, as particularly glamorous. And based on the makeup that La Prigienne is wearing, they call her La Prigienne or the Parisian. So you kind of get this idea of where the name is coming from. But again, without context, there's very little we can say about it. Now, we do have more information about another piece that we find. The bull leaping fresco, and that is modern day bull leaping. Go ahead and go to Spain. I'm sure you can try it out. This is the fresco we're looking at. And this is heavily restored. The darker areas are areas that are original, the lighter areas are ones where uh, conservators have gone in and filled in the blanks. And this is a Minoan ceremony of bull leaping. To the Minoans, athleticism is absolutely necessary. And the reason that societies get so into athleticism is because that same athleticism that allows you to jump over a bull or swim across a major river means that you'll be a good soldier. And most of these uh, groups, most of these cultures do not have a standing army. Usually they're volunteers. So the farmers are being called up to become the army in times of war. So you want people to be physically fit and capable should war come. And here we're seeing a difference in skin tone. Now in Egypt, when you see people of different color, it indicates ethnicity or race. And you do see that quite a bit. They will uh, take people from south of Egypt. They have a different coloration than the people to the west of Egypt, from what's today Libya, than the Egyptians, than people from the Levant. They use different colors for different ethnic groups. In Minoan society, the skin color indicates uh, gender. So males will have a darker skin tone and females will generally have a white skin tone. The reason is females weren't supposed to be outside very much. You're supposed to be athletic, but not outside. Or at least you're always protected from the sun. This idea that only the laborers are the ones out in the sun on a regular basis. So the men uh, tend to have a red skin. The women tend to have a fair skin. And we're seeing this very athletic composite view. We see 
uh, both the men and women shown in profile, and especially the man leaping over the bull is in a very awkward position, but this is what they were actually doing. The bull runs at you, you grab the horns, you flip over the bull, you land on its back, and then you flip off of the bull. And we're seeing that happening right here, where there's a woman in front about to be flipped up on the bull's back. The man in the middle is currently flipping over the bull, and the woman behind has already gone through the motion. Both men and women are doing this, and it tells us a lot about gender in Minoan society, that women are as athletic as the men. We also see the specific Minoan style. We see these very tiny waists for both the men and the women. We see long, curly hair again for both. We get this sort of self-confident and proud feel, this very dynamic feeling of constant movement. And you notice there isn't much difference between the male body form and the female body form. They're very, very similar. Both small waist, muscular legs, thin arms. There's not much of a differentiation. And when you think about it, we didn't see that much of a differentiation in Egypt either in the Old Kingdom. So they're really indicating that women are fairly equal to men in Minoan society.